us to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So in the next uh, 16 episodes, we are going to cover the uh, November 2022 Science Paper 1 extensively. Remember, uh, we are just uh, from finishing uh, looking at Mathematics Paper 2 of uh, the November 2022 uh, exams. We've also done a uh, mathematics paper one of uh, the November 2022 uh, exams. So if you haven't uh, watched uh, these uh, episodes, please check out on our YouTube channel. And if you are new to uh, this channel, please uh, consider subscribing uh, and also uh, liking our videos if you find them to be very helpful and also share with others that may find them to be uh, helpful. Remember our goal is uh, to help you understand uh, the concepts, prepare for exams so that you ace your exams. So during uh, basically the explanation I might uh, take uh, a little bit longer than uh, usual but uh, once you understand you should be able to take half or less the time I take to explain because I need to explain to you so that you understand the logic behind. So uh, let us uh, move straight uh, to question one. Question A1 a wire has a length of 1.3 meters and a diameter of 0.4 millimeters. Which of the following instruments would be most suitable to use to measure the length and the, the diameter? So basically we have uh, options. We have uh, basically M, micrometer screw gauge. So micrometer screw gauge in this case can we use it to measure the length? The answer is uh, basically no. So basically, micrometer screw gauge, we can't use it to measure basically 1.3 meters because it's used to measure short distances. So uh, for the case of a uh, micrometer screw gauge, so when you're dealing with micrometer screw gauge, uh, basically you are um, measuring very uh, small uh, length, which is uh, basically the length of... Um, the case of uh, less than uh, two centimeters. That's the case. So plus in or minus uh, 0 0.001 uh, centimeter, which is uh, basically the degree of accuracy. So only use a micrometer screw gauge if you're measuring a thickness of uh, things like the thickness of the wire, the, the hair, those small things. Uh, basically, that's when you use micrometer screw gauge. So, uh, in this case, A cannot be collect. Uh, loo. So, when can you use a loo? A loo, we can't use it to measure uh, basically 1.3 meters. So, if you are measuring the length, which is uh, basically length greater than 100 uh, centimeters, you use a uh, measuring tape. So measuring tape is uh, normally around 5 meters or so or greater. Then this one will be able to measure this distance in, uh, properly because remember this distance in, is broken into two. This is 100 centimeter, then this is 30 centimeter. A meter low, which is the maximum, can only measure up to here. Then it means we have again to uh, mark here then measure another thing 30 centimeters which I give you the loom to make an error so you uh, need to use the proper or the most suitable instrument which would be basically uh, the measuring tape or tape measure so B cannot be collect so what you notice uh, from this angle uh, C the tape measure would be uh, the most appropriate to measure the length then when it comes to diameter which is uh, basically 0 0.04 millimeters so for 0 0.4 uh, millimeters uh, basically this is a small uh, length or the shortest length in this case if you are dealing with a um, very uh, small length you use the micrometer screw gauge which is uh, basically all the length which are basically very small so you notice that uh, c would be the most appropriate because of course you can't use a venia caliper to measure this uh, distance so d is incorrect so basically take note that when you're measuring uh, the length which is uh, basically less than two centimeters such as thickness of the wire, the, the hair, a small cotton, you use micrometer screw gauge. When you are measuring uh, the diameter of things like uh, basically a, a beaker, 
uh, the bottle you use uh, basically venya calipers so venya calipers is basically for those uh, length that are uh, basically range between 1 cm and uh, 10 cm then for a medium uh, distance which are between 5 cm and uh, less than or you go to 100 uh, centimeters you can use uh, basically a loo which could be a meter loo specifically that's uh, basically what you need to know so make sure that you revise that once you revise that you discover that uh, you'll be able to answer any question on uh, this uh, topic let us look at question 8 the following diagrams show a measuring cylinder and the balance used to measure the density of liquid x what is the mass and the volume of the liquid so we've got uh, those options so what we notice in this case we've been given uh, basically the first uh, balance scale where uh, basically without us putting uh, the liquid and what is the leading on the scale so the leading on the scale is uh, basically at this point so now what you need to do is basically if this is 40 so this should be a uh, 10 20 30 40 so the leading here is basically a uh, 20 uh, basically grams remember these are grams you can see from here so this is 20 grams then uh, after we put uh, basically the liquid then uh, the volume of the liquid you see uh, up to here which is uh, basically 16 uh, centimeter cubic what is the leading so the reading is uh, moving from here it goes all the way up to where it's pointing which is uh, this one so we know that uh, each of these is in uh, basically 10 grams so we have uh, this is uh, basically 120 we have uh, 130 140 so what we have is in the grams one which is after we put uh, the liquid it becomes 140 then uh, the grams before we put anything which is in the leading here it was uh, basically 20 grams so what is uh, the weight of the liquid so the weight of the liquid will be uh, basically the weight after we put uh, the liquid on the uh, balance scale minus uh, the weight which was there before we put um, the liquid in this uh, basically uh, measuring cylinder which is 20 uh, grams so when you subtract that one we're going to end up with 120 grams as the answer so just go here and look for that answer which is b so b is the correct answer the common mistake is just for you are uh, basically to come and uh, lead from here all the way come and get this one which will be 140 you will notice that this is will be there which is uh, basically incorrect then uh, the other temptation is uh, for someone to just uh, come and lead which is here and get this 20 then you notice that there will be 20 and there will be this 60 which is the uh, the volume that we found so the volume is still collect but it has to be uh, matched with it, the collecting uh, reading so basically it is at uh, the final reading minus uh, the leading before we put the liquid in this uh, measuring cylinder if you can do that you are safe so basically this is how you answer uh, this uh, question let us look at question a3 the following diagrams show an and stretched spring of 10 cm and a stretched spring of 22 cm when a force of 4 newton is applied calculate the total length of the spring when a force of 6 newton is basically applied so we have uh, basically the are 10 cm basically before the uh, spring is stretched so in this case we have nothing attached to the spring then after basically we attach a 4 newton uh, weight then it is stretched to a uh, basically 22 centimeters now the question is asking us uh, to calculate the total length when a force of uh, basically 6 newton is applied to uh, this uh, basically uh, scale so uh, what we need to do is uh, basically to answer this question we need to apply a uh, Hooke's law now remember the Hooke's law experiment is one of the most frequent asked question in section C so make sure that you master this uh, experiment because it's almost 
always in an exam if it didn't come this year it will come the following year so uh, what does it state so it's because states that um, the force or load applied to a spleen is directly proportion to its extension provided it does not pass the elastic limit so uh, basically we will need to apply uh, that uh, principle so because the force applied is in big we expect uh, the stretch to be uh, basically big so the first thing that we need to do is for us to find it, the constant based on the initials so the constant k is given by a uh, basically a uh, extension divided by a uh, basically the load that's what uh, we need to apply so we know that uh, basically before we applied in a uh, basically load we had this a uh, measure then after we apply this a uh, load we are getting a uh, 22 centimeter so what we have is 22 a uh, centimeter minus a uh, basically the 10 which was there just like the way we, uh, we did in the previous question then divide the value um the weight which is a uh, 4 minus it before we put this uh, 4 newton it was zero so it will be that zero so what we get is uh, basically uh, 22 minus uh, 10 it is basically 12 centimeter then we divide by uh, 4 minus zero which is uh, 4 newton well, then when we divide that we are going to get uh, basically 3 centimeter per newton so for every newton that we apply we get a uh, basically three centimeter extension so now what we need to know is what will be the length of the spleen so the length of the spleen now because we applied that we just to just be now uh, basically the case of uh, extension which we are looking for will be equal to so we cross multiply here to find this extension what we need to do is cross multiply you see that one so it will be just a constant uh, extension then multiply by a uh, basically uh, the load that is uh, before the elastic uh, limit is uh, reached so we are going to have uh, basically three uh, centimeter per newton multiplied by the load which is uh, six newtons so like that so what you notice is uh, this newton and this newton cancels then multiply three multiply by six we are going to get uh, 18 centimeter now this is a uh, basically just the extension now remember before we put anything we already have the 10 centimeter so it will be basically this 18 we add this which was there remember per extension from uh, the 10 you see this one that we are finding remember because we are taking out this 10 so to find the total length which is in this case what you are required it will be 18 plus 10 so which will be basically 18 plus 10 which will be uh, basically 28 centimeter which is normal because if for a uh, 4 newton the 4 newton the uh, total length is coming to 22 then if what two additional newton it should be beyond 22 so it cannot be 8 out it cannot be uh, 18 so it has to be a slightly higher than this one so you notice that here we are getting 28 centimeter so 28 centimeter is basically the correct answer let us look at question a4 a motor is used to lift a load of 400 newtons through a height of 12 meters in 20 seconds what is the efficiency of the motor if the input power is 300 watts so uh, basically the question is uh, requiring us basically to uh, find uh, efficiency given that uh, basically we have a load of 400 newtons being lifted uh, through the height of uh, 12 uh, meters in 20 seconds then uh, we have the input a uh, power of 300 watts so uh, basically the first question is how do we calculate efficiency so uh, basically efficiency is given by uh, basically the output so in this case the output is uh, power divided by uh, the input which is also power then multiplied by 100 percent then uh, basically that's uh, efficiency so now um, we know what uh, the input is so this input is uh, basically this um, 300 watts then can you find the output you can find the output uh, using 
uh, the formula for finding power. So power is uh, basically given by work done uh, per second, which is in this case equal to a force multiplied by distance moved towards the work. So this distance should be uh, moved uh, against uh, a certain uh, opposing power. It could be basically a friction, it could be basically gravity. So in this case, since you say, uh, height is against gravity. So it's that vertical distance that we're measuring, then divide by time, which is uh, in seconds. So in this case, we have um, a 400 newtons, then we multiply by uh, 12 uh, meters, which is the height, then this gives us uh, the work done, then divide by time, which is uh, 20 uh, seconds. Then at this point, we know that this 0 and 0 can cancel, then uh, 2 into 2 is a 1, then 2 into um, 40 is uh, 20. Then 20 multiplied by uh, 12, we are getting basically 240 watts. So we know uh, basically the uh, output of power. This uh, basically tells me that we are going to uh, now have 240 divided by 300. Remember this 300, then multiply by uh, 100%. Then uh, this 0 and this 0 cancels, basically can divide by 3 into uh, 24 is 8, then uh, 3 into uh, 30 is 10. Then uh, we have 8 over 10 multiplied by 100%. This gives us basically nothing but 80%. So 80% is basically the efficiency of uh, this uh, motor. So D is the correct answer. Let us uh, look now at question A5. The following is a table containing information about particles in different states. Which of the substances is uh, basically a uh, solid? So we have um, the substance L, M, N, O. Then uh, basically arrangement of particles. So we have a fixed a pattern, which is uh, basically uh, the property of a uh, solid. Then a uh, random. Random is uh, basically uh, gases or uh, basically a uh, to a large extent a liquid so and that one so we know that um this one and this one are incorrect so remain with a and c then a spacing of particles closely together then also a c close together then uh, in this case we cannot uh, distinguish between uh, a and c they still remain uh, similar then the movement of particles then uh, we have um a very mobile in a uh, solid, um, basically, uh, particles are not uh, very mobile. They are very mobile in gases, then mobile in uh, liquid. So you notice that uh, this is incorrect, so A cannot be correct. Then uh, only the vibrate, which is uh, correct. So C is the correct answer. So uh, basically, uh, this is how you answer the five first uh, question in your exam. So uh, please join me in the next episode where we're going to start from question 6 uh, going uh, forward. Thank you viewers for watching uh, this uh, episode. If you find this video to be helpful, please uh, consider liking and also if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. By liking, subscribing and sharing, you are going to help us improve our visibility. A simple like from you makes a big difference. So once you subscribe to our channel and go to our channel, we discover that we've got so much content. So we've got a mathematics based revision questions, we've got a physics, we've got a chemistry, then we've got also topic based section for all the subjects. And this is the best section for you if you're having any challenges in any particular topic.